Boom, and welcome to Modern Any Cars for 2022. Uh, we're so excited to, you know, take on this new year because there is so much happening. My name is Jochen Kutsia, and thank you so much for tuning in. And do remember to like, subscribe, and share. Yeah, um, ladies and gentlemen, wow. I mean, you know, it's been, uh, it's been, I wouldn't say a slow start to the year. We're pick, it's picking up pace really fast, and there's so much happening. Um, you know, uh, Marat Any Property, uh, Marat Any Cars, my apologies, is moving to a weekly slot, so you can expect so much more motoring news, uh, motorsport news, and everything to do with uh, vehicles, whether it's commercial or passenger vehicles. So, I'm talking about motorcycles, we're going to have a lot more outdoor shoots, and yeah, everything to do with motoring finance, maintenance, and motoring fun. In this week's edition of Minded Any Cars, we are featuring the stunning new C-Class. I mean, you know, it's always been uh, the leader in the luxury sedan segment, but uh, the 2021 version uh, that was launched in December, it's only being built in three factories, actually, which is really cool. Um, it's uh, Bremen, it's, uh, I think, in China, and, of course, Port Elizabeth in South Africa. So very, very, very interesting. I think they invested a good amount of money, super high tech, and I mean, this vehicle is stunning. Beautiful, beautiful styling. The interior, sumptuous, but so advanced. I mean, you're, you, have, uh, you, know, you have an infotainment system that's bigger than a TV in your house. But so please do check out our publication tomorrow. It's super exciting. Uh, we'll be back after this with some motoring news. Stay tuned. You know, there's a lot happening in the world of motorsport. Not only did Gazoo Racing, um, you know, take the Dakar Rally, kudos to them. I mean, it was kind of obvious from the beginning. But um, yeah, tons of stuff happening in the motoring sphere. But for me, the standout story in the world right now is that they have just launched a <laughs> brand new commemorative mild hybrid Lamborghini Contash. 50 years after the original came out, you know, and this is one of the most iconic Lambos ever. And, you know, I think, it, I think it's been, everyone's had a poster of the Countach up on their wall. It was just what, that vehicle. Now, thank you, Lamborghini. They have launched the LPI 800-4 Countach. And I mean, you know, so you, <laughs> firstly, 2 million euros. Limited production run of around 100 and uh, I think 112, and then of course this baby comes out with a with a uh, V12 engine, pushes out 804 horsepower and has a um, super super capacitator hybrid engine, which also you know will help with your fuel efficiency. Which I don't know if that's a problem for you. Uh, if that's something you think about when you're driving a Lambo, then maybe you know you're in the wrong market. But cool, it's gonna help you out with fuel efficiency and give you great, great performance. I mean, this thing, this thing rockets to one, uh, zero to 100 in 2.8 seconds and is limited to uh, 355 kilometers per hour. Wow. Plus, it's just looks, it just looks beautiful. I mean, I think it is truly, you know, a Lamborghini, they don't, make, uh, they don't make ugly cars, but this is one of the most striking Lambos you will ever see in your life. I mean, just the styling is so reminiscent to um, the original models. So really, really beautiful, super nice. And um, yeah, I doubt we'll see one in Namibia, but um, it's just it's, it's so good to see these iconic, um, iconic models, you know, getting rebirthed. So yeah, kudos to Lambo. They <laughs> really, really did not play games with this one. Boom. In other news, elect <laughs> electric vehicles, you know, it's, 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 it's really where that we're going to in the future, but uh, for a lot of consumers, uh, it's either there's price limitations, because, I mean, they can be costly, and then, of course, range. You know, it's not, it's not the car you're going to go on safari with. Um, however, that is fast changing, and the, the good folk at Electronic Vehicles Namibia, they are really pushing hard 
to democratize this technology and to make electric vehicles a lot more practical for the local market. Um, th and what's super cool is they've teamed up with the Grove Mall of Namibia to introduce Namibia's first DC, the DC fast charger for the public. So just imagine, you're going to do your shopping in your, in your electric vehicle, you park it down, uh, it's, on, a, it's one of the, on one of the lower floors, uh, you park it, plug it in, <laughs> go for a coffee or go do your shopping and your vehicle is charged. So now your range is completely you know, restored and you can go about your day in a super cost effective way. I mean, um, uh, we're gonna speak more about it in the upcoming segment, but imagine having a coffee. So you charge your car for 20, for 20 minutes, uh, it's gonna cost you about 50 bucks, but then you have up to a 60% charge. You know, and that can get you, give you a good amount of mileage <laughs> in terms of uh, you know, cost per kil kilometer. What's also very cool is um, they are importing pre-owned um, electric vehicles. Uh, they're very big on the Nissan Leaf, which is a phenomenal car. I mean, you know, from the outside it doesn't look sporty, but I'm telling you, even in eco mode, that thing pulls. And when you switch off e e eco mode, <laughs> the performance is literally electrifying. So yeah, um, yeah, without further ado, uh, let's head over to uh, Electronic Vehicles Namibia to, to learn more. But also, if you can make it out to the Grove Mall this coming Saturday, <laughs> you're in for, uh, yeah, again, an electrifying experience. Boom, see you after the break. Electric vehicles have been around for over a century, but limitations regarding costs and um, also mobility have kind of constrained it. And then, of course, you know, we have an interest of, you know, larger multinational oil companies. But what's really cool is how that revolution has changed with global warming and with the technology making it so much more accessible and so much more viable for the everyday user or industrial user to use an electric vehicle. To tell us a bit more about how this revolution has really kicked off in Namibia is Jens Denk from Electric Vehicles Namibia. Jens, how are you today? Good, I'm well, thank you. Yes. So, um, tell us a bit more about Electric Vehicles Namibia because, I, I mean, you know, electric vehicles, we've been importing them since the Prius that was launched like in 2007. And then, of course, the Leaf came out and just elevated that. What do you guys do and uh, what's, the, what's the mission? Okay, so uh, Electric Vehicles Namibia imports um, electric used cars uh, mainly from Japan and we specialize in Nissan at the moment because they are the main people that actually um, have started the mobility uh, push. Uh, unfortunately, they've dropped the ball a little bit recently, in, in, uh, especially in Nissan South Africa who have refused to bring in the newer model. Uh, so there's a, a little bit of a hindrance there. Um, so all that's available in Namibia at present is what we bring in. Um, we specialize in uh, um, uh, um, electric vehicles. Namibia specializes in repairs, maintenance to the vehicles as well. Although at this stage, we have had no issues with the vehicles. Everything has been kind of like replaced the brake fluid. And, um, you know, just generally uh, a small little bits on the car. We haven't had any uh, um, uh, problems with the vehicles as such. And um, everybody, all of our clients so far, um, which is over 30 uh, clients that we've personally supplied vehicles to, are very happy with the vehicles. There's nobody who says, no, 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 you know what, take your vehicle back, we don't want it. Wow. And uh, internationally, there's been a survey done, and 93% of people surveyed throughout the world have said they will never go back to a petrol or diesel driven vehicle. You know, internal, internal combustion engines, I mean, you know, they've been getting smaller, more efficient. We've had the hybrids and everything, but this really is the future. And, and you know, uh, through your efforts, uh, you, are, you are almost democratizing, democratizing, you know, electric vehicles in Namibia and um, also taking away that anxiety of, 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 you know, how far can I travel, where can I charge? Because, um, you know, 
tell, and, uh, uh, let's understand a bit more about you know, the constraints with the normal traditional home charger because I mean, still, it's, like, it's almost like your phone. You plug it in at night, the next morning you're good to go. But there is some anxiety, especially for people commuting. Yes, that's um, as Conrad likes to say, um, in Namibia we have way more plug points. So Jens, you know, um, I mean, this is the future. People are, are, are uh, we see large manufacturers really, you know, changing their whole business model to an electric model. And I think, you know, within the next 10 years, we're going to be seeing so many more of these vehicles on the market. But in Africa, there is a concern about, you know, charging infrastructure. Um, I mean, I think in certain more rural places, you have a uh, lack of access to uh, electricity, unless you have, of course, a photovoltaic, um, you know, solar, system, a solar panel system. But what is the situation in Namibia? And, um, you know, should people have an anxiety about charging infrastructure? Um, no, I don't think that's um, really valid, especially not in, in and around Vintuk. Uh, most of the cars are capable of uh, between 80 and 120 kilometers on a charge. Um, you know, and um, generally, uh, Conrad likes to say we have more plug points in Namibia than what we have um, actual filling stations. So basically, it's, it's not a very valid argument. Um, the argument at the moment is literally still uh, when people want to drive to Swakopmund or the north or uh, further cities um, out, outside of Vintuk. Um, so um, generally, charging the car at home uh, from your three-pin wall socket, standard ABS, SABS uh, wall socket, 16 amp, is, is absolutely fine. It takes about five hours to fill this battery, and then I can drive up between 100 and 120 kilometers. Um, a sort of recent survey um, uh, pegs it at 30 kilometers on average that the average Vintuk driver drives during a day. Um, you know, obviously there's people that drive more. My brother has managed with a car that has less range than this to drive 239 kilometers in one single day wow. by taking the charger with him and wherever he went for a meeting, just plugging it into the wall socket. So roughly you're getting about um, uh, between 10 and 20 kilometers um, of range for every hour charged from the, from the socket. So uh, it really, in, in and around Vintuk, there's uh, no excuse. And we've just now recently installed the um, fast charging sy uh, system at the Grove Mall, which will be going online shortly. And um, so if people are in town and they've had to do a couple of extra runs or forgotten something here or there, they can just go to a fast charge and top up their range on that. And this is a revolution. I mean, kudos, yes. kudos to you guys. This is a massive uh, investment and also a massive um, show of commitment to this electric vehicle revolution. Tell us about these fast chargers because, I mean, you know, having one at the Grove Mall, I pop in for coffee, I pop in for my shopping. Correct. Cars stopped up, armless gelukke. Yes. And, I mean, it's, it's the, the, the cost comparison must be incredible. Um, yes, so generally uh, when it comes to fueling costs, electricity, even through a fast charger, which is a little bit more expensive, obviously, um, is still uh, roughly a third of the cost of putting fuel, uh, diesel or petrol into your car. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, so, so for a normal car like mine to fill up at home, uh, on, on pay-as-you-go uh, pay electricity cost me about $40 for 100 to 120 kilometers. And if you were to um, want to drive 100 kilometers with a petrol or diesel car, depending on the efficiency, the average would be between 100 and 150 Namibia dollars to, to, to put that enough fuel in the tank to make that mileage. So just, just, just in comparison, roughly. So if on the fast charger, you'd probably be paying between 50 and 60 dollars for a charge, which is still one third of the cost of a diesel or petrol. Absolutely. And I think, you know, the fast charger is a revolution because, I mean, um, I think what, so 0% uh, to 60% in a matter of minutes, I mean, I could... Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. 20, 20 minutes roughly over a cup of coffee, um, you know, running to pick up something at the shop quickly, plug it in here, and then literally 20 minutes later, you, you, you got 60%. That's very cool. And I think, you know, also for Grove Mall, uh, why Grove Mall? You know, because I mean, it is very central. It's a commercial. It's a commercial center, and there's a lot of people in the area. But um, why specifically Grove Mall? Okay, so they were uh, the the first people that we con well we contacted several people um, and asked them whether they'd be keen to have such a thing. And a lot of people came with funny excuses and things like that. And the Grove Mall was was really one of the people that were really open to the idea right from the word go. And um, you know, kudos goes to them for actually allowing us to install this fast charger. And, um, uh, you know, there's um, 
please guys watch the media there's something really exciting happening in in, in roughly a one and a half weeks time so keep your eyes peeled um, uh, social media and uh, uh, and the media uh, there's going to be a launch of the fast charger and there's a, a nice surprise which the grover very very graciously uh, offered us so that that i'm going to keep it under my hat for now yeah. but uh, people can look out for that that's going to be a an absolute whacker very cool so so i still have a week and a half to contact you guys and get my leave yes yes yeah so roughly you know uh, what's the process i contact you guys and um, these obviously are pre-owned pre-loved uh, vehicles yes. imported but um what, what kind of models am i looking at what kind of cost implication am i looking at Okay, unfortunately, at, the, at present, there's only either the Leaf or the Nissan ENV 200. Yep. So the ENV 200 has got the exact same drivetrain as the Nissan Leaf, um, but it is based exactly on the um, NV 200 from Nissan, which is a panel van similar to a, a Caddy or something like that. Oh, so it's um, a, as an industrial uh, commercial application? Too. Correct, yes. Yeah. And um, it, it's, it's actually, um, it's got a, a quite a bit of space. Uh, there's different variants that you can get. Obviously, you can get a seven-seater, which is called the Nissan Ivalia, which is absolutely fantastic. And um, I think 2017, they upgraded to a 40 kilowatt hour battery. So you can do 200 kilometers roughly on a, on a, on a charge on that vehicle. Wow. So, um, and also the, the newer Nissans uh, imported from uh, Japan are also available if somebody wants to splash out and, and get one of those you're probably looking at um, closer to 300 to 400,000 uh, for, for one of the new models uh, the newer models uh, I'm talking in 2017 onwards and uh, also uh, recently as 2019 they went to a 63 kilowatt hour so it's called the Nissan Leaf uh, Plus um, which has got a 63 kilowatt hour battery so there with that you could probably drive to Swakop Mont already so very cool. And I think also if you, if you plan your trip well, you could, you could travel anywhere, you know, just sleep over somewhere, charge, charge the vehicle and pop off the next day. Especially if it's a social trip. So if, if, if you're not doing for business where you have to be at the next town at a certain time, if you're just um, going, like Conrad mentioned earlier, you know, lodge to lodge trip yeah. would be perfect for that, especially if the lodge has solar and you get there early enough, you could basically fill the battery up from their solar so that you're, you're, you're not, um, uh, 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 um, you know, dirting you know, putting out carbon. Oh, cool. And um, lastly, what's the policy environment like? I mean, you know, how's, how's um, I think, let's say the commercial sector, but also uh, the regulatory environment? You know, is it, is it an easy process getting in these electric vehicles? And also, uh, how's, the, how's the appetite for uh, the commercial market, let's say the taxi or transport uh, service providers? How, how's the appetite for these vehicles? Um, yes, so we are in, in negotiations with some of the, the taxi and, and, and public transport uh, sector and um, uh, they are also looking for investors. So if anyone is out there who, who wants to invest in this kind of thing, um, you know, talk to us. We'll pass you on to the guys who are looking for investments into the taxi industry um, and, and uh, ride hailing services and things like that on electric vehicles. Um, so there's a great opportunity there for investors. Um, so we've basically done our part in bringing the fast chargers in now to remove the anxiety, um, but um, it's um, really going to take a while for people to actually cotton on and to see the benefits of going electric. Very cool. Um, could you show us how it charges? Yeah, sure. So uh, basically when you've stopped the vehicle, you would open the charging port from a little switch on the dashboard. And uh, that just pops up. Oh. You've got two different charging ports. So um, we're going to show you, well, the granny charger, they call it, is a convenience charger, which basically you would use at home to charge, which charges at 3.6 kilowatt from a standard three pin outlet. Um, and um, this car takes about five hours to fill the battery to 100 to 120 kilometers worth of range. Um, the fast charger is on this side here. It's called Chatamo standard. Um, so this charger here is equipped with uh, Chatamo chargers on both sides. Uh, the one that the Grove will be, have a CCS2, uh, which is um, your BMW i3s, your VWs, uh, the Renault Zoe's, and all those kind of things could charge with that. And the other one is a, is a um, Chatamo. So I'm going to show you the Chatamo now. That literally just... So that literally just... Um, you pull the plug out and... Um, you would swipe your RFID card across. Obviously, we've got this charger open at the moment, and you would just literally plug it into that port, and then you could literally just walk away. Uh, let me just see why this is not. 
Okay. Yes. I understand there's, a, there's going to be an app also? Correct. And that will go off um, your bank account. So it'll be your RFID card will be linked to your bank account and um, uh, any money that you use for charging. So it's similar to a prepaid system. So you would put money on your account similar to a pay as you go phone. So you put a certain amount of credit on your card and then you swipe until the credit was finished. Yeah. But I mean, also, I, I, think, I think the cost comparison, I, I checked on your website. It's phenomenal. I mean, these 100%. cars pay themselves off in, in, a, in a, what, a matter of a year and a half, two years? Yes. Uh, so, Oil Tech Namibia has a car that they've, that it's almost four years that they're running it now. Within this 22nd month, the vehicle had paid itself off in its entirety, basically based on the savings, on putting fuel and the servicing versus a, 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 a Honda, Hyundai Bucky that they were using before compared with a Leaf. So the leaf paid itself off in its entirety. The whole cost of the vehicle, everything, 22 months. Very cool. Okay, last question. Can I, can I change out the battery? You know, like after a couple of years, of course, you know, uh, any, any battery does lose uh, capacity. Correct. Can I bring it over to you guys, pop it in your battery and get, go my way? We, we do that. Um, so uh, roughly, if, if, if we get a, um, a, a battery upgrade, which you import, so there's loads of guys that do it, there's Muxan, there's EVs enhanced in, in, in New Zealand that do that. It's a bit difficult getting batteries in that moment because there's such a huge demand for them. Uh, we are offering our own solution at the moment, which we're working on uh, in the next couple of months. We will be offering that. Um, but basically, if you want your battery upgraded, you can contact us. So literally, if you want us to rebuild your own battery pack, then obviously that will take a little bit longer, say maybe a week or two maximum. Um, depending, obviously, once we've got the cells in stock. So you need to tell us to order the cells. We'll order the cells, repack the battery for you, et cetera. However, if it's a pre-manufactured uh, pre product that we will be looking at, it'll be literally you drive your car in in the morning and in the afternoon you get your car back and uh, now all of a sudden, instead of 100 kilometers, you've got two, three, or 400 kilometers worth of range. Yeah. Um, we were 10 years early with our conversions. <laughs> and... Uh, Around 2009, 2010, uh, Nissan started, um, and only later BMW started, and then Tesla came. And uh, um, I think um, it's for me, if I philosophize, Elon Musk of Tesla, it's a person that stands for how much one person can change the world, you know, um, in terms of electric driving, in terms of solar, and in terms of going to space, you know. Yeah, and landing a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the same was actually with BMW, the family who owns the majority of the share of BMW in Munich. They said, we want to see an electric car. And because that one family said, we want to see an electric car, an electric car was uh, um, developed by BMW. Yeah. Obviously, uh, the cars now are very comfortable. The BMW, uh, sorry, the Fiat Uno, the EV1 had no aircon. Um, your windows had to be opened and closed like this. And... Uh, if, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, because you had batteries at the back. Exactly. Yeah. Batteries at the back, two seats. So uh, a Nissan Leaf is a real five-seater with a large and spacey um, a boot. Uh, and it's, it's, re it's really comfortable, you see. You go to the car, you have the press for the comfort access, mm -hmm. All these things, obviously, we, uh, we did not have uh, with our conversions, uh, where two friends did the main work. I, I brought in the technology, and um, it was also a joint teamwork. But it showed Namibia can build electric cars. You see, uh, we are also with our initiative now. Uh, bringing in a fast charger, bringing in cars very suitable uh, for town use. 
uh, we demonstrate um, to those willing to change that um, there is means and that it is even big fun, you see. My wife says always, uh, when I changed to a leaf, it was like changing uh, to my MacBook Air yeah. from an old computer, you know. And uh, so she would be one of the 93% uh, not going back uh, to a smoking car. How cool was that? Uh, so yeah, please check out their website, Electronic Vehicles Namibia. They're doing great work. Uh, I think um, Conrad Jens and, and the team, oh, uh, they, they, they really are pushing the envelope and helping you know, to, to help people get over that range anxiety that uh, kind of hampers the uptake for EVs here in Namibia. That's been our show for this week. And of course, you know, we couldn't have done, uh, done it without the support of Vivo Energy Namibia, the local licensee for Shell. You know, they've been doing great work, uh, not only in the, com in the commerce uh, and uh, petroleum retail sphere, but also in the industrial fleets, how they assist them with uh, getting efficiencies, especially when it comes to lubric lubricants. So yeah, kudos to the team. And uh, thank you for that magic drop that you put into your fuels, your lubes, and of course, modern any cars. Uh, yeah, we look forward to uh, walking this journey with you, and uh, yeah, uh, we'll see you at a full court pretty soon. My name is Jochen Kutsia. Thank you so much for tuning in, and yeah, <laughs> you have to stay tuned, watch the media. There's a lot of exciting stuff happening. If you have some news or a product service that you'd like to market, please do get in contact with us. We'd be happy to take that to not only Namibia, but across the world. Yeah, so that's been our show for this week. My name is Jochen Kutsia. See you next time. Yeah.